For a few years now, LG has split their LCD TVs into two series, TVs using their proprietary nanocell technology and TVs that don't. While last year's nanocell TVs models numbers started with SM, this year they've introduced the Nano line, meant to replace the SM line of TVs. Today we're going to be taking a look at the LG Nano 85, their mid-range nanocell TV that for all intents and purposes could be seen as a replacement to last year's SM9000. Hey, I'm Nick. I'm a writer here at Ratings.com where we help people find the best products for their needs. Remember to subscribe to our channel or check out our website to see hundreds of reviews on TVs, soundbars, and more. In this video, we'll start by taking a look at the design and inputs of the Nano 85, and then we'll move on to our test results for picture quality. We'll also take a look at motion handling, input lag, and sound. Throughout the video, I'll be comparing it to last year's LG SM9000, one of LG's higher-end mid-range nanocell TVs of 2019. If you'd like to skip straight to our test results, see the links in the description below. We purchased the 55-inch Nano 85, but it's also available in a 49-inch as well as a larger 65-inch version. We expect these other sizes to perform very similarly overall, though of course with a larger TV you'd likely need a larger TV stand or wall mount rated for the extra weight. Let us know if you purchase one of these other sizes and your experience doesn't quite line up with our test results. The design of the Nano 85 is quite a bit different than last year's SM9000 and doesn't look quite as premium or high-end. Overall, the TV itself looks very similar, but instead of the crescent-shaped center stand that last year's SM series had, this TV uses side feet that look similar to the entry-level UM series of LG TVs from 2019. While the wide-set feet do a better job at supporting the TV without wobble, they'll require you to have a larger table to put the TV on, as they're very close to either side of the screen. On the bright side, the borders of this TV are quite thin on the top and sides and are even thinner than last year's SM9000. They're the exact same thickness as Samsung's entry-level QLED TVs in 2020, the Q60T and Q70T, and help give the TV a more premium look than LG's more entry-level UM series TVs from last year. The controls for this TV are all done through a single button on the bottom of the TV in the middle. It's basically the same as last year's LG LED TVs, and since all commands are done through different presses of a single button, it can be a bit of a pain to use, so you're probably going to want to keep your remote handy. When we move around to the side, you'll see that the TV is very thin and it looks good. It's about a third of an inch thinner than last year's SM9000, and is even a tiny bit thinner than Samsung's Q60T, so it'll look great when wall mounted. The back of the TV looks very similar to last year's SM9000. Except while there are still some side-facing inputs, much more of them face straight back than last year's model. This is a bit of a shame as they tend to be a little bit more difficult to reach if the TV is wall-mounted, though at least some still face sideways. In terms of inputs, you've got two HDMI inputs on the side, as well as a single USB port. When you move around to the back-facing panel, you'll find two more HDMI ports, including one that supports eARC, as well as two more USB ports, Ethernet, digital optical audio out, tuner input, and comps it in with the included adapter. Unfortunately, LG didn't include any cable management options to help you hide your cables, which is a shame. Now we'll move on to picture quality. As always, check out our website for an updated comparison with new TVs as we buy and test them. First up is contrast ratio. The contrast ratio is the ratio between the brightest white and the darkest black that a TV can produce, and it's generally considered one of the most important aspects of picture quality. TVs with a high contrast ratio appear to have more detail in dark scenes without those details getting lost in the gray. As with most LG LED TVs, the Nano 85 uses an IPS type panel. While these panels are much better for viewing angles than VA panels, which we'll talk about a bit more later on, they tend to be much worse for contrast giving you poorer overall black levels and uniformity. While this TV has much better contrast than last year's SM9000 and most IPS TVs in general, it's still only okay overall, and blacks tend to look much more closer to gray when watching in a dark room, despite having local dimming. While there is a local dimming feature, this TV is still only edge lit. Therefore, the local dimming isn't nearly as accurate and effective as TVs with full array backlighting, where the LEDs are behind the entire LCD panel as opposed to only on the edges. The local dimming on this TV is very bad and makes darker scenes appear noticeably worse. You can clearly see the zones lighting up across the vertical axis of the screen, and though it's slightly better when set to medium, it's still very noticeable. While watching an episode of Stranger Things, it would light up parts of the letterbox bars on the top and bottom and would flicker a ton if any light was moving between the different local dimming zones, which was very distracting. 
Overall, while last year's SM9000's local dimming was still disappointing, it wasn't nearly as bad as this. Now on to gray uniformity. Our gray uniformity test checks for issues with the panel where different pixels are all supposed to display the same color, but might not. This can result in distracting areas known as the dirty screen effect, which is most noticeable during intense movement, such as while playing video games or watching sports. The gray uniformity of this TV is decent, and while there's some dirty screen effect visible at the center of the screen that can be distracting while watching sports, it may not be too noticeable to everyone. It's worth noting that gray uniformity can vary between units, even of the same model, so yours might perform differently than ours. If you come across a panel that doesn't correspond to our results, let us know in the comments below. Now on to viewing angles. With LED screens, the image colors can degrade when viewing the TV from an angle, which can be an issue if you have a living room setup where the couch doesn't face the TV head on, or if you watch sports with a large group of people. Like I mentioned earlier, this TV uses an IPS panel, which tends to give much better viewing angles than TVs with a VA panel. While the viewing angles are slightly worse than last year's SM9000, this TV still performs much better than most VA TVs, and the image remains quite accurate when viewed from the side. If you want a VA TV with wide viewing angles so that you get good contrast as well as viewing angles, check out Samsung's Q80T or Q90T, which use Samsung's Ultra Viewing Angle Layer to improve viewing angles to help those TVs perform nearly as well as the Nano 85. However, those TVs are quite a bit higher end and will likely cost you a fair amount more. If your TV is in a very bright and well-lit room, good reflection handling is important to cut the amount of glare you see on the screen during dark scenes. The reflection handling of the Nano 85 is impressive and is actually slightly better than last year's SM9000. While its semi-gloss screen can somewhat diffuse reflections across the screen, there may still be some reflections noticeable in very bright rooms, though overall it should be good enough for most situations. SDR peak brightness refers to how bright your screen can get when watching most standard non-HDR content. A brighter screen helps your TV overcome reflections and glare during brighter scenes. Unfortunately, this TV can't get nearly as bright as last year's SM9000, and it'll likely have a hard time overcoming glare if you watch a lot of daytime TV in a room with windows. If you watch a lot of HDR content or play HDR games from your Xbox One X or PS4 Pro, then the ability to produce brighter regions of the image is important to produce impactful highlight detail. This is one of the most noticeable reasons why some TVs seem to really pop with HDR content while others don't. While this TV does support HDR, it can't really get bright enough with HDR content to really help make highlights pop. Its HDR peak brightness is quite a bit lower than last year's SM9000 and is disappointing overall. Also important for HDR is the ability to take advantage of the wider coloring spaces that content can be mastered in. While this TV's color gamut isn't quite as wide as last year's SM9000, it's still good overall and has an impressive coverage of the DCI P3 color space used in most HDR content. If you play a lot of games or watch a lot of sports, motion handling may be the most important aspect of a TV to you. Like last year's SM9000, this TV uses a 120Hz panel, which is nice to see at this price point, since Samsung's Q60T, which is likely their closest competitor to this TV, only uses a 60Hz panel. Overall, the motion handling of this TV is good and is similar to last year's SM9000. Response time is an average of the time it takes for the TV to transition from one color to the next. Overall, the response time is good and is very similar to last year's SM9000. There is some very minor overshoot in some transitions, but it likely won't be too noticeable. There's also some noticeable blur trail in our motion photo, though again, it performs quite good and is quite a bit better than Samsung's Q60T in this regard. To help reduce motion blur, the Nano 85 has an optional black frame insertion feature. This can be enabled by turning on the True User Motion Pro setting. Like last year's SM9000, it works remarkably well, though it does cause a slight decrease in brightness. With 60 Hz content, the backlight flickers at 60 Hz automatically, and with 120 Hz content, it flickers at 120 Hz automatically, which is excellent. To learn more about this TV's black frame insertion feature, check out our written review linked below. If you plan on using your TV for gaming, input lag can be very important. While most TVs now have low enough input lag that you likely won't notice any delay, the lag of the Nano 85 with game mode enabled is very low and it should be fast enough to not introduce any noticeable lag for most people. Like last year's SM9000, the Nano 85 is advertised to support HDMI form VRR variable refresh rate. We tried this via our HDMI 2.0 GTX 1060, and it doesn't work, but it most likely requires an HDMI 2.1 source. 
We'll pin a comment down below once an HDMI 2.1 graphics card becomes available and we're able to test this. Now onto smart features. Like with all LG smart TVs, the Nano 85 uses LG's WebOS smart interface. A lot of people really like WebOS for its easy to use interface and wide selection of available apps. Overall, the smart interface is about identical to last year's SM9000, as well as with most other LG TVs. Like with the SM9000, this TV comes with LG's Magic Remote, which lets you easily scroll through the menus just by pointing the remote at the TV and moving it around to move the cursor around on the screen. All right, well now that we've gone through everything else, it's time to talk about the built-in speakers. So how do they sound? Eh, pretty average for built-in speakers on a TV. Like with most, they lack a fair amount of bass, even slightly less than last year's SM9000, which is a shame. As with most TVs, you'll be much better off with a dedicated sound system or even a budget soundbar. Overall, the Nano 85 is a good TV for most uses. Unfortunately, it doesn't perform quite as well as last year's SM9000 for most uses, and it doesn't look quite as premium, though it may represent better value for some people. Like I said earlier, Samsung's closest competition to this TV would likely be the Q60T. And while that TV has deeper blacks thanks to its VA panel, the LG is a better choice if you require much wider viewing angles. So that's it. What do you think of the 2020 LG Nano 85? Is it a good upgrade over last year's SM9000? How does it compare to Samsung's Q60T? If you were deciding between the two, which way would you go? Let us know what you think in the comments below. You can check out all of the measurements on our website. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become an insider on the website for access to all of our latest results first. Also, we're currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best products for their needs, have a look at the careers page on our website. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.